am the coordinator of the Elder and Persons with sorry, Persons with Disabilities Abuse Unit at the Northwestern District Attorney's Office. Now, my name is Anita Wilson, and I am the director of the Consumer Protection Unit at the District Attorney's Office. And we'll tell you a little bit more about what we do as the presentation goes on. So today we are going to be talking about scams uh, and with a focus on romance scams. So we'll talk a little bit more about what that means uh, briefly. So first, a little bit about our office. Um, so the district attorney's office really has two primary functions. We, in, we prosecute criminals and we prevent crime. And you, pretty much 99% of what we do falls into one of those two categories. Um, so Anita is the 0.1% the that does something a little bit different, so she'll talk a little bit about that um, in a second. But on the prosecution end, uh, so we have lots of different units within our office that handle cases um, by demographics. So we have a child abuse unit, we have a juvenile justice unit, um, my unit's the elder and persons with disabilities. Um, and a couple things that we don't do, so we cannot represent individuals, because we represent the Commonwealth, so we represent everyone equally, um, and we cannot give legal advice. Uh, again, that sort of falls into that, that vein of we represent everybody, we can't sort of pick and choose. Um, so this is my unit, the Elders and Persons with Disabilities Unit. We have, it's very small. Uh, it's myself and a chief prosecutor. We also have a victim witness advocate that works with us. Um, so we are a three person powerhouse team. Um, and so I'm the program coordinator. Uh, so we take a multidisciplinary team approach to our uh, investigations and prosecutions. So we work very closely with elder services, we work with Department of Developmental Services, DMH, those types of agencies um, to address these oftentimes very complex cases. Um, we do a lot of education and outreach to let folks know about what we're seeing in the office and how they can better protect themselves or someone they know. Um, and I'm also the triad liaison for the office. If you don't know what triad is, it's a community policing initiative that seeks to increase the safety of seniors who are living within the community. Uh, Hadley actually has a very active, very large triad program. Okay. So the Consumer Protection Unit, um, we are one of the local consumer programs and we serve Franklin and Hampshire counties and also 17 communities in Worcester County. And we work in cooperation with the Office of the Massachusetts Attorney General. So we offer consumer advocacy and assistance, and we help people resolve consumer complaints against businesses. So if you have a complaint or an issue with a business that you can't work out on your own, you can file a complaint with the Attorney General's office and or talk to our office as well. And um, those complaints get assigned to the local consumer pro programs and we help work between the two parties to come up with a solution to the problem. Um, it's a good first step before you go out and hire a lawyer or you file in small claims court to try to resolve it. And our services are free. Um, so it's a good kind of first step in trying to come up to a solution. Um, we also do a lot of consumer outreach and education, just like this program, because we want to prevent things from happening to people. And we also um, provide a lot of consumer information or referrals. So if you have a question that maybe isn't suitable for a complaint, but you have a question, you need some information, you can feel free to give me a call. And I can either provide you with printed information or point you to an agency or office who can also give you that information. So that is what we do. So we generally see scams come in three different ways to a consumer. So we most frequently see phone scams. Um, so you get a phone call from someone, a robo call, something like that, and that's how the scam gets initiated. Um, we see a lot coming through computers, through email, text messages, things like that. Because if you think about it, if you have a smartphone, it really is a little computer that you can hold in your hand and you can access the internet and people can get to you that way. 
And less common, we see male scams. So scams um, often having to do with winning a lottery or having an inheritance. You are the person who is receiving an inheritance from a long lost relative. Things like that. Those aren't as common in um, these, this day and age, but they still do happen and we still see them in our office. Um, so some of the scam warning signs that we um, advise people to kind of look out for are playing with your emotions. So a lot of times when you get those calls or those text messages or emails, they really try to hurry you and not let you think about things. So the situation is urgent, you need to resolve it now. And you don't, they don't really give you the time to think about it. Sometimes they want you to keep things a secret. Don't tell anyone, don't tell my, my um, parents that I'm in trouble if it's a call from your grandchild. They want you to keep things a secret because if you keep it a secret, you can't verify it with someone else and find out that you are indeed um, dealing with someone who doesn't have your best interest in mind. And a lot of times we see threats. So maybe not threats of violence, but we see threats of being thrown in jail. Your account is gonna be suspended. You're gonna to have to pay a fine, things like that. So they're threatening you, trying to scare you a little bit to um, cooperate with them without thinking about it. Um, another tactic we see is you've won a prize or you've won a contest. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails lately um, from supposedly from different companies saying that I've won a uh, power tool. Yes. I've won another contest. Yeah. Um, so um, they want you to, to, to be excited and take advantage of these prizes and sweepstakes. Yeah. Really, they're looking for you to provide them with information or money. So we'll get a little deeper into those things after, but I've been getting bombarded with those. I wish I had all the prizes that they promised, but unfortunately. Did you walk power drill or something? I bet that very one. <laughs> <laughs> and then we kind of look out for the types of payments that they're asking for. So scammers really want easy money. So that comes in the form of those gift cards. So a lot of scammers will ask you to go to your nearest store and buy a gift card. Those are some of the examples of ones that we hear about most commonly asked for. Or a prepaid card, like the money pack. Um, basically, it's a way of gifting money to someone else. Um, sometimes they want you to wire or transfer money, you know, through your bank account and transfer it directly into their bank account. That's kind of dangerous because when you do it, you, it's very difficult to get that money back, if not impossible. Sometimes they've asked people to send like packages or overnight mail full of cash and just send the cash to this address um, overnight. So it happens really quickly. And once you send it, um, you may not in, be able to intercept it in time if you realize it's a scam. And then there's cryptocurrency. So see the little orange logo there? That's for Bitcoin, but there are many different types of cryptocurrency. And Rachel is going to tell you about a little bit about how that works. I'm going to do my best to tell you how it works because I still don't even really get it, to be honest. So quickly, we're going to run over what cryptocurrency Scams right now. Scammers are asking folks to pay via cryptocurrency. So in a nutshell, it's a type of digital currency that exists only electronically. Which right away tells me I'm not going to understand what it is. So you can buy it using your phone, a computer, or a cryptocurrency ATM. Um, a lot of like Cumberland Farms, gas station, you'll find these cryptocurrency ATM machines. They look like a regular ATM, but they're specifically for cryptocurrency. Um, so cryptocurrency is stored in a digital wallet, which can be online or through your computer. So it's not physical money, it's sort of cyber money. Um, and people do, there are perfectly acceptable reasons why people choose to use cryptocurrency. Um, you can make very quick payments. 
Um, you can avoid transaction fees. Sometimes banks have very large transaction fees or like a Western Union may have a fee to move money. Um, so this sort of gets rid of that. And there is anonymity. You don't have to use your name or any of your personal information to move money which is great for people who want to stay anonymous, but when you're dealing with scammers, uh, it's very hard for us law enforcement to track where this money's going and who's taking it. Um, so cryptocurrency accounts are not backed by the government and its value is fluid. It's not set in stone. It's almost like an investment type of um, value. Um, and payments do not come with legal protection. So that's something to keep in mind when using, using this type of currency. Um, and only scammers will ever demand a payment through cryptocurrency, which should be a red flag. So if someone's calling you or you get an email, you're asking to make a payment through cryptocurrency, and that's the only way that you can make the payment, that is a big red flag right there that this is something that's not legitimate. So that was sort of cryptocurrency in a very brief nutshell. Um, so in addition to your money, scammers also want personal information. So your social security number, your date of birth, and your name, if someone has those three pieces of information, they can really wreak havoc. Um, they can open accounts in your name, they can take out credit cards in your name, loans, they can do all sorts of very nefarious things. Um, so if someone calls you or someone contacts you and is asking for those three pieces of information, you should be very wary about giving those out. Um, so scammers also want account information, um, especially the, the, the more tech-savvy scammers. Um, they can really do a lot of damage with your account information without even being associated with your, say, a bank or whatever, whatever agency the account is associated with. So if someone calls you asking for bank account numbers, credit card numbers, Medicare, health insurance numbers, logins and passwords for these accounts, um, this is all information that you should be very, you should never give out to anyone and no one should ever be asking you for that information. Um, there is a, a scam going around a little bit ago, well, I guess still now, um, people are getting phone calls from their banks and their banks were saying, there's a problem with your account, can you please verify your account number? Your bank has your account number. They don't need it from you. They don't need to confirm anything. If, any, if you need to confirm anything, that's, that's a red flag. All right, so why do scams work? You know, we hear about these scams in the news and we, we think to ourselves, oh goodness, you know, how, how could someone fall for this? And the reality is anyone can be a victim of a scam. Even Anita and I, who do this on a weekly basis we talk about this stuff even we've had instances where we're like is this real is yeah. this real? i don't know and we'll run it by each other and we go okay yeah this is a scam so these scams come in every shape size color and they are there's the scammers they follow headlines they evolve with what's going on so there's really no limit to what type of scam you know can come your way so uh, a lot of reasons that these, these scams work is they'll pretend to be an authority figure. So uh, sheriff's department, police department, uh, town officials. Um, I think any of you had experience or with a um, clergy member or yes. someone, a parish member. I mean, they're, they'll call and say they're anybody. So that puts that sort of level of fear. We talked about secrecy, urgency, threats that sort of plants the seed of that threatening, like, if you don't do what I'm going to do, I'm an authority figure, I will arrest you, I will you know, do whatever it is they, uh, that they can do. They play on emotions, and we're going to get into that, uh, because this scam that we're going to talk about mostly today is very uh, in tune with emotions and manipulating emotions, manipulating a very um, trusting relationship. Um, they hurry you. They don't give you time to think. A lot of times scammers will keep someone on the phone for hours until they've sort of completed their transaction or whatever it is they're trying to do. Um, I, I'm not talking, couple, I'm talking eight, nine, 10 hours on the phone with people. Um, they say they want to help you. 
if it's if they're not scaring you, they're trying to say, I'm on your side, I'm, I'm really sorry, there's a problem, I'm tr let me help you, I just need this information. And they follow the headlines. As I mentioned, they, you know, there was just a, a unfortunate another mass shooting on Monday. I wouldn't be surprised if folks will start getting phone calls from charities claiming to raise money for the victims and families of the victims. Uh, we see that a lot with charity scams as they follow those headlines. So that's scams in a nutshell. So now we're going to talk more specifically about romance scams. So this is a very interesting little uh, statistic here. Romance scams cost consumers $1.3 billion in 2022. That's an unreal amount of money. That's an unreal amount of money. That is, that's life savings. That's retirement funds. That's you know, money for grandkids, college. I mean, that's, that's a significant amount of money. So uh, what we have here, uh, this is a video that was posted by the FBI. And it is a woman who experienced a romance scam. And she's going to tell us all about her story. Uh, initially, he would read my wall, I would read his wall, we would post things. He would like things, I would like things. Um, then it got to, we would just share emails. We started sharing pictures. I knew that just based on the conversations that we'd had, that he was someone that I would like to meet. I felt a, a real soul connection with him right away. And we sang to each other, we prayed with each other, we talk about what happened at church on Sunday. There wasn't an immediate talk about getting together. Uh, he was trying to finish up a job in California, and he needed um, some money to help finish that job up. And so um, I sent him. I thought about it long and hard. I prayed about it, and I've always been a very giving person. And I figured if I had money in the account, um, that I could send him some money, and he promised to have it back within 24, 48 hours. And I thought, could do that. No one would ever know, and I'd be okay. But, you know, one thing kept happening after another. Um, he'd need more money because he was coming in over budget. Um, things didn't get done on time. You know, he needed a lawyer. He, he had to take a money loan, and it needed to be paid back. Part of me thinks that he's going to come through and pay me back what he owes me and, you know, swoop in here, be the knight in shining armor. But it's just so absurd that there's a big part of me that doesn't believe that. And that is where this is all so pitiful is because if he's a scammer, I've been so brainwashed and I've lost everything. It's all I had. Uh, it's any inheritance that I could have passed on to my daughter. The loss of money was my future and knowing that I wouldn't have to work, that I could just make it to the ripe old age of whatever and be perfectly comfortable. The loss that I've suffered emotionally, I think, has even been more traumatic. I can't even imagine a man, a person, that could be this bad. So I think of him, I can't think of him that way. My mind keeps me from thinking of him that way because there can't be a man in this world that could be this horrible to have purposefully done what he's done to me. I don't want this to happen to anybody else. If they're real and if the love is real, they're going to want to see you as soon as possible. I mean, it's been two and a half years and I still haven't seen his face. Did you hear that little piece of her, though, in the video her, where she had this little tiny feeling like maybe someday he would pay her back? But yeah, hope springs in her. 
Yeah, and then she she just knows that he's not going to, but there's a little part of her that still, after two and a half half years, still feels a little the feelings, but she knows. Yeah, it's it's a very sad story. So we have this screen up. It's Money Smarts for Older Adults. And we have booklets over there on our table. And the information, a lot of the information that's going to follow comes from this booklet. Um, it also talks about other scams. So we have some over on the table. You're more than welcome to take them home. It's a good resource. It talks about scams, but it also talks about other um, financial issues that might be relevant. Um, and it's kind of a course that... Um, that it's based on a, an educational course, um, so it has a lot of good information out there. So we're going to kind of move on to some more the nuts and bolts of really what a relationship or what a romance scam is. And basically the definition is that a romance scam is when a new love interest says that they love you and that um, they need money. <laughs> And what they might do is assume a false identity. So you heard that woman talking about um, we'd like things on each other's wall. We'd email back and forth. Um, do, you, do you understand what on a wall means? That's like a social media. So maybe through Facebook or Instagram, one of those social media things. And the purpose is to really like make friends, connect with people. Um, but a lot of Times what happens in these situations is they might start on one of those social media platforms, they're called, and they might pretend that they are someone they are totally not. So they might steal someone else's picture and someone else's name and pretend they are that individual. Or maybe steal someone else's picture and come up with a fake name and pretend that they're someone they're not. So you may see the picture uh, come up on your page and go, oh, you know, he's kind of cute. He wants to talk to me and, and oh, I'm going to make a new friend or whatever. But unfortunately, who you're talking to isn't always what they seem. And these scams are kind of different from your normal phone scams or the email scams or text messages because they take a lot of time. They invest a lot of time in developing a relationship with you, getting you to trust them and to like them and to love them. Um, and oftentimes, as this guy sounded like he was asking money for a business or a home project or something like that, they asked for money using these stories that they tell you. And just be aware that these scams can happen online, and they often happen online, but they can also happen in person. Sometimes you meet someone and something like this happens. So the Federal Trade Commission is an organization that tracks scams and takes scam reports from individuals and also takes them from law enforcement and consumer agencies um, like the Attorney General's office from across the country. And above on the screen are some of the things that these scammers will say, kind of based on the popularity of what they say. So the top one is about a quarter of all the cases, they heard something like this, that either me or someone close to me is either sick or hurt or in jail, and that's why they need you to send money. And of course, you know, you've developed this relationship, of course you wanna help out someone. Another one is they want to teach you how to invest. So they want to tell you what you can do with your money and they make big promises to them. Sometimes with the imposter schemes, they pretend that they're in the military. And you know, a lot of times when you're in the military, you might be stationed overseas. You only get short periods of time for vacations or leave to come home and see family or friends. Um, so that's a really good excuse as to why they can't see you. Um, they might need your help with a, an important delivery. So sometimes it's money that they're transferring around or other situations. So they really use you as a mule to transfer money from person to person to person to person. Um, another thing they do is they kind of rush into things you know, we've never met, but we've had this great relationship. You know, we've talked and we've communicated. 
let's get serious and talk about marriage. They really get serious. They want, they want to show you that they're committed. Um, another thing is that they come into some money or some gold and maybe they want to help you learn how to do that too, or they want to share it with you. And um, Another excuse aside from being in the military is that I am out on an oil rig or I'm in a ship in the middle of the ocean and that's what I do for my work. You know, they pretend to work for the oil industry or something like that. And that's why they can't come see you. But they're lonely. They need friendship. They love you. They care for you. Um, and another thing they do is sometimes um, in a relationship, they ask for personal pictures, you know, kind of boudoir kind of pictures or pictures of that nature. And unfortunately, sometimes when these pictures are sent, they often come back and try to blackmail you and tell you, I have these pictures, unless you send me money, I'm going to send them to all your family and friends, or I'm going to post them on the internet for everyone to see. So that's another tactic of getting money from you. That's a very small percentage, but it does happen. I have heard of stories of it happening in Western Massachusetts, unfortunately. That's something that occurs like the all with the other Yes. Yep. Yep. Although I have to say the the one person that I spoke to about the situation was probably around my age as well. But yes, a lot of still young. A lot of, thank you. A lot of a lot of young people, yes. Are, yeah, they're comfortable doing that kind of stuff. Um, so that yes, they may um they may fall victim of that too. So here are some of the things that they say or they do or they try to get the, their victim to do and claim that they need money for surgery, medical bills. Maybe a family mem their fake family member needs uh, money for a medical situation. Um, sometimes they ask it for help in paying off fees, like for customs or pay help paying off their past gambling debts. You know, I'm really working hard on turning my life around. Can you help me? That kind of thing. Um, or sometimes they're even bold enough to ask you for money. Yeah, send me money. I'll buy a plane ticket and I'll come see you. Um, sometimes they want loans because they're having a hard time. Um, but they'll keep asking if you start giving. And sometimes they go back to those old tricks of asking for gift cards and for wire transfers. And of course, we all know they want those kind of payments because they're very hard to recover. Once you send the money, um, it's pretty much gone. So the way these online romance, romances develop is a lot of times they contact you through social media, like a Facebook, Instagram, any kind of those social media things, sometimes through dating apps, um, websites, text messages, email, I've even gotten messages from people who want to be friendly on games that I play on my, my phone. Um, and I'm always very wary because, you know, a lot of times the first thing they'll ask you is like, hi, I'm Joe. I'm from Cincinnati. Where are you from? Like, I'll have to tell you where I'm from. I don't really want to chat with you. Um, but these are the ways that they try to reach out to you. And, you know, you may think it's innocent. You know, people want to be friendly. People want to be kind. Oh, hey, great move on Scrabble or words from friends or whatever. Um, but you always just really have to be wary about who you're communicating with because they can pretend to be anyone. Um, like we said before, use people, other people's names or photos. Unfortunately, it happens a lot to military members. Um, and, you know... Some of us may have a trust for uh, someone who says that they're in the military because maybe we have family, close friends, relatives who have been in the military, and you might have an affinity for someone like that. But unfortunately, sometimes that is used um, to come up with a fake persona. Um, sometimes they, you know, say you're on social media and maybe you're interested in gardening, so you belong, you have follow a lot of gardening pages. They may kind of join one of these gardening pages to meet people who are interested in that and try to use that affinity to get to know you and to develop a relationship with you. Hey, we have a lot of the same interests, blah, blah, blah. And of course, 
they're going to use every excuse in the world not to meet up with you. And sometimes not even talk with you on the phone or video chat, things like that. I heard of a case where they video chatted with this supposed person that they were involved in, but the person always kind of used, um, was in the dark. So they couldn't really see their facial features very clearly. So, you know, it kind of was very questionable. So as we discussed, some romance scams do happen in person. They're people that you might meet in the, in the community, or it could be, involve someone who is isolated, socially isolated, because maybe um, of a medical condition or they don't have transportation. Um, so sometimes they prey on people like that because maybe there aren't a lot of other people in this individual's life. And they're, they may be lonely. They may be um, dependent on others to help them meet their needs, like getting groceries or medication or just helping them around the house. Um, it can also be someone that you meet outside, like in your church, um, community center, a social group that you're in who kind of maybe sees you and maybe thinks that you have assets and tries to kind of wheedle their way into your life. Again, it's someone who's going to try to gain your trust. And unfortunately, some people do take advantage of that. So here's some signs of romance scams. So if you encounter someone online or in person who's like this, or if you hear about these things from a friend who may tell you, you know, I met this really great person online, I've got to tell you all about them. If there are some of these warning signs, you may want to kind of ask that person more questions and follow up and see if they are really being primed to be a victim or if they are being victimized without really registering that. So a lot of times they're really uh, complimentary or flirtatious. I've seen this on social media posting where um, there will be this gentleman who kind of joins in the conversation and it's like, oh, hey, you know, Susan, I really like your profile picture. You're really beautiful. You have great eyes. Can you add me as a friend? I would be suspicious of that, but maybe someone who's kind of, you know, maybe a little vulnerable would be like, oh. He finds me attractive, I'm sure. I'll add them as a friend. And a lot of times they shower you with attention, you know, they wanna talk all the time, wanna spend time, you know, spend time online with you. Um, oftentimes, of course, they wanna keep it a secret. Um, they don't want you to really talk about the romance with your friends, so your friends don't ask questions or family. Um, and of course, the financial aspects, of course, they're maybe gonna ask you some questions to kind of tap in. Do they have savings? Do they have a house? You know, do they have retirement funds? And they really want to get that information to see if you could be a potential target, unfortunately. All right. So if it has been established that you or someone you know is experiencing a romance scam, how do you find help? So the first step is to stop communication. A scammer. And that may seem like, all right, step number one, that's easy. Um, it's not as easy as you even think, especially when we're dealing with a person who someone thinks they are in a very committed, very deeply loving relationship with. That can be very hard to do. Um, talk to someone you trust. These types of situations should never be secret. Always talk with a friend or family member that you trust about what's going on. Um, tell your financial institutions if you did lose funds. Um, sometimes, depending on how money is moved, they can help either reimburse you or they can help recover some of the money. Um, and always report scams uh, to local law enforcement, um, the FTC, down there at Federal Trade Commission, we have information on um, the FTC over there on how to report. Um, it may seem like that doesn't do a lot because a lot of times law enforcement can't recover money or they can't figure out who may be on the other end of the scam. However, every once in a while, the scammers will trip up and we will be able to either recover money, stop money from being transferred, um, and find out who the person is. Um, 
I was, I'm thinking of a couple of cases that we have where that was the case. And the person, unfortunately, is out in California. But we, there's a current warrant out for them. So if they ever do come to Massachusetts, they can get arrested on that warrant. So it's, it's not impossible to find out who these people are. And it's also really great for local law enforcement and for our office to know what's going on so that we can better, you know, do our jobs like we're doing now and tell people what we're seeing and how, you know, what's the big scam of going around in the neighborhoods in our communities. Um, because scammers will see sometimes like a, a little splurge of one type of scam through one community and it will sort of move around. Um, so the more that we can better prepare people for what's going on, the better the, the chance that they will not lose any money. Um, also, you can report to Adult Protective Services if the person is over the age of 60. And uh, that is the number right there. We also have, again, we have tons of information over there about how to make these reports. Um, if the person is over the age of 18 and they have a disability, you can report the scam to the Disabled Person Protection Commission or the DPPC, which is the third bullet point there, uh, and then the Federal Trade Commission. So you want to take action as soon as possible. So if you figure out that this may be a scam or you have an inkling that, that what may be going on is a scam, take all these steps as quickly as you can. Um, and report the profile. So if this is an online scam, so if you meet someone um, through a dating app or through Facebook or Instagram or some other form of social media, uh, you can report those profiles to that platform so that they know what's going on. Um, so there's, these are just some examples of some of these platforms. So Match.com, eHarmony, Hinge, Facebook, Street. So personally, I think the most devastating and complicated part of these romance scams is when you know an individual who is experiencing a romance scam and you don't know how to help them. Um, I get a lot of phone calls from daughters, from sons, from brothers, from sisters of people who are experiencing romance scams and they say, I don't know what to do. They won't listen. They, the more I, I talk to them about it, the more they push me away or the angrier they get at me. And now they won't even accept my calls. They won't talk to me. So these situations are very, again, they're, they involve a manipulation of a trusting, loving relationship. So as the, the woman in the FBI video mentioned, she was talking to this person for a long time before he even mentioned money. So she was already in, emotionally invested in this relationship even before money was even mentioned. And they do that on purpose. So that you are already in a position, an emotional position, so they can sort of strike when they think the iron's hot. So uh, how to help a loved one? And the unfortunate answer is sometimes you can't help everyone. Sometimes people don't want to be helped and sometimes people just don't want to see it. But what you can do um, is not to judge, first of all. Um, nothing will push the person further away from you than saying, what are you doing? This is this is a scam. This person doesn't love you. This you're being foolish. You know this is, despite how you know foolish it may seem to you, this person is really invested in what's going on. So the more judgmental you are, the more hostile you are to them to try to make them realize what's happening. The further away they will likely shelter themselves. Um, it's important to understand how these scams work so that you can sort of understand the psychology behind it because there really is a psychology. These, these scammers know exactly what to say to get someone to love them. That's really the goal for them is to get someone to love them, to care for them enough to comply with any sort of financial requests that they make. So understanding how these scams work, what they say, the tactics they use is important to um, help support someone who is experiencing it. Um, you can research the questionable person or business on your own. It's Google is the stuff you can find out when you Google is amazing. You ever Google yourself? It's scary. I Google myself every once in a while and I go, oh my God, like I, I, I saw a, a letter from a, I was on the Dean's list in 2009 and I was like, oh, that's 
That's interesting. I didn't know. I didn't know I made the dudes list in 2009. I found something out about myself by Googling myself. <laughs> so sometimes people talk about the scammer. So if, if a certain account or a bi businesses can, can do these type of scams as well, you just pop that into Google and do a little research yourself. You can find out some, some incredible things. Sometimes if you find other evidence that, hey, someone else experienced a scam at this person's hands, that evidence can help a loved one start to realize that maybe this is not legitimate. Again, not to say, don't approach them and say, look, you know, just say, I'm just going to leave this for you. You can read it and just do with this information what you will. Just throw it out there. Um, if they are receptive to this, have your loved one request a recent photo with conditions. Um, so this is asking the scammer, hey, can you send me a picture of yourself um, with a note that says today's date or with today's newspaper or your hand up like this, like something that shows that this person that took that photo is the person that you're talking to. And if that person isn't willing to do that, that's certainly a red flag. Um, assist in securing funds and freezing credit. Um, so the way I always like to, to phrase this type of thing is to say, all right, you can give money to whoever you want to, but you should do it on your terms. They should not be asking you for all this money and all this money should not dictate whether or not they care for you. And if the person's willing to have you help, you can call bank with them and say, we think there's her money might be compromised or her money might be compromised. Um, what can we do to help secure it? Um, credit freezes are great if someone gives out personal information. So like the um, date of birth, social security, and name. Um, do we have that information? Okay, maybe, yes. Um, so a credit freeze is basically putting a freeze on your personal information so that no one can use it to open any accounts. Um, that's very helpful. Uh, and if you are able and willing to do this, meet the need for companionship. Because oftentimes, someone sort of falls into this situation because there's an unfulfilled need that this person is fulfilling. So whether that's companionship, if they're lonely, if, if this happens um, a lot with homebound folks who don't have a lot going on, if they don't have a lot of visitors, they just get bored and they want to talk to somebody. So they can... A lot of people go to social media for that and they can end up in these type of situations. So if it's an extra phone call, an extra outing, just something to give them that companionship that they may be lacking. Um, and again, if applicable, file a report with the elder abuse hotline um, or the Disabled Person Protection Commission and report to law enforcement. So even if the person is saying, no, no, this person loves me, I'm not being scammed, we're fine. Always report to law enforcement if you think something is not right. All right, so uh, along that same line, um, so the Match Group, which is a company that um, handles Match.com, eHarmony, the online dating uh, sites, Zelle, which is an online platform that makes money movements. You can uh, transfer money. And uh, FINRA, which is the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, um, they sort of came together and said, romance scams are a big problem. How can we help? So they uh, sponsor this free peer support program for people who have experienced a romance scam and who are recovering from that trauma. Um, again, it's free. It's a virtual program. It's a 10-week program. And basically, it's almost like a support group that um, puts people who have experienced romance scams in touch with each other uh, so they can talk through what may have happened um, and sort of heal to the best of their ability together so they don't feel quite so alone. Because it's a very, as the, the woman said in the FBI video, she, she feels very isolated, very alone, very just defeated. So this is a really great, uh, great option for someone who has experienced a romance scam, is aware they experienced a romance scam and wanting to sort of talk it through. All right, and these are just some general tips of ours to prevent fraud and identity theft. 
So you always want to monitor those bank statements and credit card statements that you get on, the, on a monthly basis. Uh, if you don't, you can uh, usually look at your statements online and just give it a look, see, make sure that everything on there is something you recognize. Because um, sometimes scammers will, if they get your information, they'll make very small withdrawals, so a couple dollars, just to see if you notice. And if you don't, they may make it sort of a regular thing, and all of a sudden you're out a couple hundred dollars and don't even realize it. Um, again, act quickly if you suspect fraud of any kind. Um, order your credit reports. You are entitled to one free credit report a year. And you can get those from annualcreditreport.com. And those will tell you any debts you have in your name, any accounts, so credit card accounts in your name, um, so that you should review that, make sure all of those are accounts that you recognize. Um, keep your social security numbers, account numbers, personal information private at all times. Um, there's really no reason anyone should be asking you for that information. Um, and shred papers with personal information. You never know where those can end up. And people can do all sorts of crazy things with information that you wouldn't even think is, is personal. Events, Triad, as I mentioned earlier, they sponsor a shredding event. Uh, the next one I believe is in September, end of September. Um, you can also buy little shredders at, I think they're, $40, $50 at like a Walmart. Um, those are, you can only do one page at a time or else they get all jammed, trust me. I did it very, I did it not the correct way. Um, but if you don't have a lot of documents, that can be a good option. Um, verify information before you act. So if you do get a call from someone claiming to be from your bank saying, I need your account number, there is a problem. Um, say thank you very much and hang up. And then take out your debit card number or a bank statement and call that number that you know is from your bank and say, hi, is there a problem with my account? So verify the information. Don't, if, if you think it may be legitimate. Um, and big one, limit personal information shared on social media sites. I am a constant struggle with my father about this. Constant. My dad's on Facebook and he puts, he Posts where he is all the time, and he posts what year he graduated from high school. He's just putting all this information, and he's like, I'm finding all my friends. He's like, you see your friends around town. He's born and raised in the same town. You don't need to be putting all that stuff. You know, if people want to know you, they will add you. They will find you. You don't need all of that information because someone can use that. Like Anita said, if you really like gardening, gardening, somebody can use that information to say, oh, I'm a gardener too. And then you talk, and then they, you know, they, they sort of build a persona around who you are so that you like them or you connect with them better. So I say to don't put nothing on social media. Um, I know I like to use it to stay in touch with my family members who don't live close by, so I, they post pictures of the family. Um, and which is fine. I mean, that's that's a personally that's a great way to use social media. Um, but you want to make sure that your um, privacy settings are up to date. So you can set um, privacy settings so only your friends can see certain things. You have to approve a photo. If someone posts a photo of you, there's all sorts of things you can do through your settings. Um, so make sure if you do use social media that you update those settings so that everything is private. And with that, that is our presentation. So does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? So the great thing is we, um, Rachel printed out our slideshow presentation. Um, there are some handouts over on the table so that if it's a lot of information. <laughs> we understand it. It's a lot of information coming out. And it's out. the afternoon. It's after lunch. And right. So if you need any of the resources or any of the phone numbers, things like that, they are on the handout. Because you may not need it now, but you may need it down the road. Um, we also have those 
blue bags over there and other documents that have our phone numbers on them. So if you are in a situation, you can always call one of us and um, just kind of run it by us. Or if you need some tips on dealing with something, a scam or dealing with someone you know who may have been scammed and just maybe trying to get some tips on how you can help them, um, please feel free to give either of us a call. All right. And with that. Maybe I've got a comment. Oh, Which, sure. Most of us, you know, at least maybe myself, have kind of like a stable community situation. But I, I do know from personal experience who was caught up in a, in a romance scheme and 100% tried to convince this gentleman in this particular case. I, I guess what I'm thinking of is, you know, there's programs like Golden Girls or Seinfeld where they actually, you know, they, the, the woman, you know, who's, who's not the beautiful, you know, vivacious, lovely model that he thinks Yes, he's going to be there. And uh, he, God knows, he spent a hell of a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they, he's buying her jewelry, you know, things of that sort. So, and, uh, but I guess uh, there has to be uh, thinking what I was saw right now. Her lips were red as roses. <laughs> Sky blue. Her hair the color of the gold she stole from me and you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's like pulling teeth. It's like pulling teeth, talking to people, trying to, to sort of... But and it might need to come from somebody else. No, so maybe people, you couldn't convince him, but maybe his... When you think of it, yeah. the time. I mean, the people are going to take enormous amounts of time to build up the kind. Yeah. I mean, a con man is to be exactly that. Yep. My mom. No, God bless us all. She's yes, but talking about a friend who was, who was scammed. And when she talked to her, the other woman, is he, he looked so honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look on me. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. But, you know, people don't come into your house looking like you. Know, yeah, I mean, nobody looks like a criminal until they commit a crime. So, I mean, when you think about that Bernie Madoff scams, the oh, kinds yeah. of schemes, oh, that's, or that's more crazy. recently, George Santos, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, that woman in Longmire looks all over the papers last yes. week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was disturbing. Yes. There was some good news, though. There was um, a, cr a criminal who got convicted and who had stolen over a million dollars from people. Um, he ended up getting extradited back here to Massachusetts and faced charges. And, you know, he was successfully prosecuted. But, you know, that's one person out of, you know, who knows how many are committing these types of crimes. But it probably came from some a uh, bunch of people reporting that this is what happened to them and sharing that information. Yeah. Did you have a question? I just say, um, I'm wondering, are women more easily scammed than men? Are there studies? I'm sure they've done studies. You know, I, I don't think we have any information on sort of a national level, but I know personally, I think it's right down the middle. I hear men being scammed, I hear women being scammed, but sort of the common denominator is um, they've been widows, widows and widowers, recent widows and widowers. And, um, it's not we. It, it's not out of the realm of possibility for scammers and people to read obituaries, and you know, there's a lot of information in an obituary, a lot of information, and people use that. I mean, it, it's horrible. It's 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 heartbreaking, but they will use those to find those vulnerable people. My other question was sort of my, my observation is that. There was one time where I almost had money, and it was had to do with my grandson. Mm -hmm. He had just enlisted in the military. Well, actually, the college had enlisted in the military. And I got a call, and the call was one of those rush calls. And it said, um, well, look, this is your grandson. I need your help. And I'm like, well, you know, none of my grandson, none of my grandson, it's not about they're going to call me in jail now, but have ever been in trouble for a new so it's like the first thing you want to do is help. I said, I said, well, can I help? What can I do? And luckily I didn't say his name. And he said, um, something about my grandmother. 
And none of my grandchildren ever followed me, grandmother. They followed me only every single one of them. They're about 40 you now. They're about 40 years old. <laughs> they still follow me. None of them. And that's what I thought. If it happened for them, I probably would send the money and then wait for my husband to come home. I called my daughter and my immediately. And I said, did any of you get a call? Is Colin really in trouble? What's going on? We know we hear that. And I wanted to make sure I was wrong. Mm -hmm. send money. And she said, don't worry. Seven family members so far down the state. Wow. wow. You know, so and they want yeah. to move in on this one because they live upstate. states. So it was, you know, yeah. But that one bird, grandmother, not a grandmother. And like I said, they weren't in my life. I had my daughter's son. So I was ready. I was ready to give information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's, you know, I'm an asshole. You know. yeah, but there weren't too many words on this part. They were kind of garbled. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure. And I was so upset at that point. Yeah. They they turn on that yeah. fear factor. And it's like, yeah. all, all bets out. In some cases, we've so, seen. No, it was me. I wonder if my husband had answered that phone. If it had gone to her. Really? Yeah, you never know. They were at the time. Well, actually, a, a very good friend of mine. Well, the same one. They cast their net very wise. No, I don't have that kind of money. Yeah. And sometimes what they do is maybe if they think they're maybe not convincing you, the grand the grandchild that calls you. Sometimes what they'll do is the another person will come on the line. And they'll be the defense attorney or the sheriff or the police department. So then they'll pull out that authority figure yes. to then try to scare you even more and try to suck you in even more. Yes. So sometimes with those robocalls, you'll call, you'll start talking to someone and they're like, hey, wait, let me call my supervisor in. And they'll put someone on there who's really like a better actor or better salesman or better, you know, is better able to convince you to comply with what they're asking for. Um, you know, they call in the heavy hitter, hitter to kind of seal the deal, um, just like, you know, sales. Um, sometimes they do that. So um, they, they'll try really hard. It's a lot easier to get money from scamming people and scaring people than it is to say, you know, break into a bank or break into your home or something like that. Lot less, lot less effort with a bigger reward on their end. Mm -hmm. Oh goodness! Long well, about that, you caught on. Mm. You're sending. We always like to hear success stories. Yeah, it was study. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to do a little more research. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's out there. Sure. Research part. Yeah. Yeah. Busy. yeah. <laughs> We'll take that on our free time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, there's no end in sight to what type of scams. I mean, that's, if we look at how much money they're getting, I mean, romance scams alone, $1.3 billion. This is a, a, a huge, it's a business. It, it really is a business. They're getting more and more resources. They're getting more technology. They're getting more bodies to make these phone calls. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, like playing whack a you get one and then you have more pop up and there's no end in sight. So education is really our best yeah. tool at this point. All right. I'd be curious to know if you said other family members got that call. Yes. How did they locate the phone numbers? I mean, without unlisted, while these unlisted phones and cell phones not being published, and the phone with the denominator was one, one boy. Yeah. Twenty-two years old. Just playing with brain. So that was like. Well, I wonder, did anyone post it on Facebook or anything like that? Maybe they posted on social media, or it could have just been random. Um, because with those robo calls or those telemarketing calls, they can dial thousands of people all at the same time, and then if someone picks up, they'll deal with that person. But if, you know, if it goes to, if that, once that one person picks up and say it's one person doing this job, once that one person picks up, they disconnect all the other calls. So they're just trying to grab people who pick up the phone. So we often advise people, if you don't know who it is, don't even pick up the phone because you don't want them to know that there's a live person on the end of the line. Let it go to your voicemail. And then if it turns out to be your doctor's office calling you to make an appointment, then you can just pick it up really quickly. Or you can call them. 
you know, after they leave the message, you listen to the message, oh, I'll call them back. Um, but if it's an unknown number or you're not really expecting a call, just let it go to voicemail and deal with it after the fact. All right. Thank you for coming. Yes. <laughs> we very much appreciate you taking the time on this very gorgeous day.